Hi, welcome to CS Magic. My name is James Lockman, and today we're going to dig into Flash Catalyst. Let's start with our Illustrator file, just so you can see how it's organized. In it, there's a single artboard, and on the artboard I have some copy. Now the copy's been organized into layers, so if I look at my Layers panel, you can see in the layer called Content, I have a Chapter 1, a Chapter 2, Chapter 3, and Chapter 4 all organized for me there. I've created this with a little bit of space. We'll be adding some pictures in this area. This happens to be my control, and my control is a vertical scroll bar. It has a thumb, that's the cat, and then it has a track right here. And We'll be defining all of these parts once we get into Catalyst. You can also see a few buttons that appear across the top, and these are going to be navigation buttons. So once we've built this file inside of Illustrator, we can then move it over to Catalyst. Before I move it over to Catalyst, I'd like to make sure that I've got it saved. Hit my Command S to save it, and now let's switch over to Catalyst. I'd like to create a new project from an Illustrator file. I can choose it here or from the File menu. I'll go into my Flash Catalyst sample and pick this one that I've called AIW, Alice in Wonderland. Catalyst will show the Illustrator import options immediately. I'll keep the default options and click OK. It can take some time to parse the file. Now our single artboard appears as a single page or state in Flash Catalyst. And that's a little terminology you've got to get used to. In Catalyst, we think about states of applications, not necessarily pages. However, the nomenclature remains pages or states so that those of you who are familiar with page-based layout will be comfortable here inside of Catalyst. Let's zoom out with Command-0 or Control-0. And now we can see our parts. Some things have changed. If you do a direct comparison between my Illustrator layout and my Flash Catalyst layout, you'll often find that there are some subtle differences. In this case, this box right here doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to expand it a little bit so that it fits on my stage properly. Make it a little wider and make it a little bit taller. Now that I've done that, let's create our scroll bar. The scroll bar consists of the cat's head and this blue bar here. So hold down your shift key and click on the blue bar. Now I've got both pieces selected. If I look over here in the scroll bar layer, I can also select them simply by clicking on them and holding down the shift key to select the other one. Once we've got them selected, we need to tell Catalyst that this is going to be a vertical scroll bar. From the heads-up display, this thing's called the heads-up display, you can see vertical scroll bar. Once we've converted that artwork to a vertical scroll bar, there are still some things that we need to do. We've got to define what is the thumb, which is the part that goes up and down, and what's the track, which is where it rides. Click Edit Parts, and now I'm looking down inside of that vertical scroll bar. Selecting the cat's head, and tell Catalyst that this is indeed the thumb, which is the part that's going to move up and down. I can now pick the track and tell it that it's the track. Now I have a completely functional scroll bar, but at the moment it's not really going to do anything, so we've got to attach it to some copy. So we've got to attach it to some scrolling content. You'll see that we have a breadcrumb trail up here, similar to Illustrator or Bridge or many other applications that you might be used to. I can get out of the scroll bar by clicking here. The next step is to connect this scroll bar with some scrolling content. With the scroll bar selected, I can hold down my shift key and click this copy right here. Now I'm going to convert this artwork into a scroll panel. A scrolling panel requires that you have a scrolling bar, whether it's a vertical or horizontal, it could also be both and some scrolling content. 
We don't have any scrolling content assigned, and you know this because Catalyst is giving you this message. Click Edit Parts, and we can choose what's going to be moving around. Select the text and make it to be the scrolling content. Now watch carefully as the border changes once we choose scrolling content. Did you notice that the outline got larger? Well, that happened because when we created the scrolling panel part, the text was placed inside of a new object that's the scrolling panel container. We can get into the container by double clicking. Now I'm inside of the container. I can tell that right here. It says scrolling content one. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see that Catalyst has added this little object that says add more content here. Select it to delete it. And then hit delete to get rid of it. Now let's expand the text. Choose the text box and let's change it from area text to what's called fit height text. This will automatically expand the box all the way down to the bottom of the contained text. Way down there is where the bottom of the text is. Now, once I get out of the content and look at the scrolling panel, we can see that the scrolling panel cuts off there. Let's go back in there for one more thing. I'd like to put in some artwork. I've got a couple of pictures I'd like to stick in here that will also scroll. Remember, I'm now inside of the scrolling content itself, and so anything I put inside of this area is going to be visible inside of this window that we can't quite see right now. Let's insert a picture. And I've got the rabbit. And we'll stick him right here. Scrolling down, I'll put another picture in. So there's a couple of pictures in place now. Great. Let's see what happens when we preview this in our browser. To preview in the browser, hold down the Command key and hit Enter on a Macintosh or Control and Enter on a Windows computer. Well, here we go. We've got our Chapter 1. We've got our Rabbit. And here's our scroll. How's that? If you'd like to learn more about Flash Catalyst and the things that you can do with it, then you should come to my Introduction to Flash Catalyst webinar. I hope to see you there.